Do I have to say my name? Um. Sure. I suppose a lot of people probably don't know me. My name is Mac Valentine. You look like you're gonna sneeze there. Nope. Alright, alright, we'll keep going. I guess, I guess pretty much pretty much the only difference between me now and me then is that now I'll wear my hat like this. I mean it used to you know is this kind of like a trip down memory lane. Sure you want to talk about this? I mean, it's been a while. I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to be looking at you and not the camera. Okay, okay, I just wanted to be sure before I, before I kept going. Well, I think, I think I'm going to need a little help to get this. I don't really like talking about it much anymore. When gang first got together, it was about, I'm going to say 37. I think it was a little hazy back then. Uh, we, it was before, before Gator got there. We, uh, we started off in about 37. It was, uh, it was Forrest Freeling's comedy extravaganza. And, uh, somehow, uh, me and the rest of the gang, we all got booked on the same night and through some kind of just critical error ended up on the same stage at the same stop at the same time in front of the audience. And the audience just just ate it up because I mean we were really we were really fighting with each other, but the audience loved it. Well, oh yeah, let, let, let me tell you about the other guys. Uh, there was Ace Flexmore. I'm not. Not entirely certain if that was his real name. I'm pretty sure it wasn't. But uh, he was a fitness buff, and he used to he used to film he filmed one of the first actual workout shows, where one of the the biggest problems with his show itself was that one there was no sound when they recorded it, and two he never really gave instructions. It was just him working out, and so so they moved him from the from from the, his agent, I, I assume, moved him from doing doing TV like that into doing stage shows. Not exactly stage shows, you, you know what I mean, but at first he was trying to... He, he put him on the stage for reasons I am entirely unaware of. The, he wanted to be on TV still, but it just wasn't working, and so the agent just, just put him in front of an audience working out and they would have someone come out and hit him with a pie at some point in his performance and that was his famous moment would be when that pie came people would come just to see that moment that that pie would just just hit him in the face sometimes he'd be doing push-ups and the guy would slide it under sometimes he'd be doing a sit-up and the guy helping him just slams it in his face and right right at that moment that would be when it would end and the audience loved it then, uh, we had a fella called, uh, we called him El Mexican. Now, I, I came to find out later that his name was Greg Smith. He was not Mexican in any way. He just, well, let, let me be honest with you, America. They just, racism was funny. Racism was funny back then. And, well, 
He just he just picked that as his bit. I don't even know if he knew when he was Spanish. He just said words and might have even been nonsense. Wore a big sombrero. Everybody, everybody loved it. Everybody just ate that up. And, uh, yeah, he just, he just was there and, and looked Mexican. That was pretty much his job. He sometimes played music, just said Spanish words in front of people, and they just, they just laugh. Things that are, uh, a little different now. <laughs> Not gonna say that I'm, I miss those days, but I mean, it was easier to get a laugh out of people. And then, uh, we had, we had Gluttonous Greg Redfield. Gluttonous Greg's stick was that he would just eat things. And sometimes they'd be like the most mundane thing that you could imagine. Like you'd be, you'd be like, oh, he's eating a steak. Well, that's, that's, that's all right. He's eating a steak. But then he'd eat like five more steaks in front of you. And he'd do this on stage. And people would just, people would come from miles away to just watch this man eat things that were or were not food. And and that was just one of the pinnacles of, of entertainment at the time. And uh, I am surprised that he is alive. To the point that he is, I am very surprised that he is still alive. I had, I had seen him, I had seen him eat I had seen him eat a piece of a Model T Ford. And I'm not entirely sure which piece it was, but it was black and so I assume it was metal. And he, he was right on the stage the next day. One must have had teeth, stomach, intestines, and colon of steel. Stronger than steel, he ate that Model T. Stronger than steel. And, uh, yeah. We had him, and then there was me. I uh, I like to think I was I was a pretty good humor man. I uh, I tried my my thing was that I tried to be the clown tramp type fella, you know, like the lo the lovable tramp. Like he just goes around and does his own thing, and you know, people don't like that. Thinking of it now, it's not really this. As funny as it was then, but it was funny then, and that was the point. See, things didn't really carry to this point for my routines. I mean, that's a that's a that's a different it's a different story. It's a <laughs> different story entirely. Um. So anyway, uh, we got together on that stage and. First, it was just, it was just chaos. I mean, as chaos as organized chaos could be. We just, we just kind of ran. We just started doing our own thing, and realized at that point that it conflicted. And uh, when the pie ended up on Flexmore's face, Gluttonous Greg started trying to eat the pie. At which point. He ran into El Mexican, knocking off his sombrero, and it landed. It landed on Flexmore's head. Now, now here's where the real kicker of the bit came in. I took out Flexmore's leg, and he landed into another pie with the sombrero on his head. And El Mexican stood there above him and said, "That's my hat." And the audience just loved it. <laughs> 